I lost all respect for myself, so here's a video where I rank every single Mario 64 DS minigame. Jokes aside, Mario 64 DS is one of my favorite DS games, and a large part of that is the 36 included minigames you unlock throughout your adventure. We're also going to be rating every game out of 5, so at the end, we can find out which character had the best overall average. Alright, enough of the exposition. Let's jump right in with the absolute worst minigame, Loves Me. I doubt this is even a controversial opinion, mostly because Loves Me isn't even really a game. All you do is pluck petals off a flower, and when all is said and done, the game will either end on a Loves Me or a Loves Me Not. And if you get three Loves Me Nots in a row, the game will result in a really Loves Me Not. Feels real, feels bad. Lucky Stars. This is the dumbest game in the world, besides that last one. Loves Me is hardly even a game though. This, meeting what I would consider the minimum requirements of being a game, is the worst one on here. All it is, is there's two cards and you pick one. If the card you picked has a higher number than the other card, you win! Just like many of the other Luigi games we'll be looking at, you can decide on how many coins you want to bet, but that feature doesn't make any sense here when all you're doing is picking a random card. I mean, it's not like the poker game where you can bet more if you're dealt a good hand. Why is this here? Not the feature, I meant the game in general. Boombox. Alright, moving on to our first one-star game. What an honor. In Boombox, every chest plays a different sound effect when you tap it, and you gotta remember which chest contains which sound so you can match it with another chest that plays the same sound. So yeah, just a matching game. Not particularly interesting. Psyche out. A card will show up on the top screen, and you have to guess what symbol is on the other side. <laughs> Unlike the dumbass Luigi one, you can faintly see through the card to find out what it is. Definitely an interesting concept, but it doesn't make for much of a game. Memory match. On to the two-star games. This one is just like Boombox, except it's pictures instead of sounds. And much like the other Luigi games, there aren't any stages. You just have a global coin count you're trying to rack up. Memory Master. This is just memory match, but harder. I do think it's marginally better because the game will start with four cards flipped over at the start, making it a bit more than just plain luck. Connect the characters. You gotta love a game where its name also doubles as the rules. All the character heads will travel down the white line, and you need to draw additional lines so you can guide them to their respective bodies and, you know, connect the characters. This is only a two-star game for me because there's no time limit, which sort of defeats the purpose because as long as you never rush anything, you'll never lose. So it's really just an endurance test. Also, that Luigi doll is f***ing scary. It's not just me, right? Look at that thing. You could practically write a creepypasta about it. Mario Slot. It's slots. Really basic slots, might I add. This is another Luigi game where betting makes zero sense. In a lot of more competent slot machines, the more money you bet, the more lines you have to win on. In fact, even the slots in Pokemon do that. But here, betting changes absolutely nothing. So what's the point? By the way, the artwork on the machine is based on the Famicom Mario Brothers cartridge art. I don't know, I just thought that was cool. It's probably the most interesting thing about the game, in fact. Super Mario Slot. <laughs> a waste of a game. This is literally just Mario slots with more wilds on the roulette, which does technically make it better because you do have a higher probability of winning. But seriously, what a waste of a game. Snowball Slalom. In this game, you ruin your touch screen as fast as you can by aggressively swiping up over and over to make the snowball move. The goal is to cross the finish line in the best time possible, but I'm not a fan of the method of movement. And also, these small rocks stop you dead in your tracks, which is dumb as hell. I could see them slowing the snowball down or destroying a bit of it, but a snowball this big should not immediately lose all its speed on a rock that small. Giant Snowball Solemn. This is just Snowball Solemn, except the course is longer and you have to avoid penguins. Kind of a waste of a game, but at least the penguins make way more sense than the rock in regards to halting the snowball. Trampling Terror. This is an endless game where you try to get all the Marios to jump through as many hoops as possible by creating trampolines on the bottom screen using your stylus. The shorter the line you draw, the smaller the trampoline, and the higher Mario will bounce off it. It's not terrible, but there is a better game that uses the trampoline gimmick and trying to get Mario to jump through the hoops can honestly be sort of obnoxious. Mix-a-Mug. Moving on to the decent games category. Mix-a-Mug is essentially slots, but it gets a leg up for me simply because it's easier to time the slots. Plus, trying to line up a headshot is honestly pretty fun. Mario Slides. Same premise as connect the characters, except you're trying to guide the Mario head to the star, and it moves on its own, creating immediate agency. It's simple, but fun. And later stages can get really hectic, especially when they add more Mario heads. Bounce and Trouts. You have to juggle three Marios in the sky by tapping them, and you score points anytime one of the Marios lands on a fly guy. This game is endless, so it'll keep going until you have three Marios fall off the screen. Bounce and Pounce. Same idea as Bounce and Trounce, except this one is stage-based opposed to being endless. I'm ranking this one higher because I think the unique stages for every round is a lot more interesting than the game just randomly placing fly guys until you die. Trampoline Time. Here's a better trampoline game. Marios jump in from the left, and you have to guide them to one of the exit platforms on the right depending on which one is currently lit up. It's alright. The Keto Launch. You gotta slingshot on the bottom screen, and you
you need to fling spinies into the moving baskets on the top screen. There's a better slingshot game coming up, but this one isn't bad at all. Toxbox Shuffle. This is a concept you've definitely seen before. There are three boxes, Yoshi is under one of them, they get shuffled, and you have to pick which one Yoshi was under. Later stages have more than one Yoshi. Apparently, the actual name for this game is Shell Game, and it dates all the way back to ancient Greece. There are even European paintings from the Middle Ages depicting it. The more you know. Shell Smash. Use the paddle to knock shells into other shells to earn points. It's admittedly fun to watch the score rack up in a sort of primal cookie clicker kind of way, but there is not a whole lot of strategy to this one. Basically, all you're doing every round is just hitting a shell as hard as you can into other shells and hoping the domino effect is good enough. I still ranked it this high though because my dumbass monkey brain likes stimulation via rising numbers. Hide and boost seek. There are a handful of boos on the bottom screen, and when the lights go out, you gotta scribble that darkness out of there and uncover them all. This game is a lot easier on an actual DS. Not that I would know otherwise, of course. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't emulate anything. Usually. Mostly. Sometimes. Witch Wiggler. There's a bunch of Wigglers on the bottom screen, and you have to tap the one that matches the patterns on the Wiggler on the top screen. This game starts off pretty simple, but then you get to this stage, and it's like, dude, are you kidding me with this? <laughs> Literally impossible. In before some kid tells me it's not impossible because they take everything I say at face value. Paragon. Alright, here's the four star games. These next games are the real stars here. In Paragon, you have to match pairs, but you can only match cards that are touching each other. It's sort of like Mahjong in the sense that you want to be cautious about what you're pairing first. You can potentially put yourself in a position where you'll run out of possible moves if you don't plan ahead. I didn't think much of this game when I was younger, but revisiting these as an adult, I really enjoyed this one. Paragon and on. Same idea, except it's endless. You would think this wouldn't be as engaging when it's endless, but they continue to add more suits the longer you play, making it harder to find matches. You eventually do get to a point where there are so many suits. Wrong moves can result in a game over simply because you won't have any possible moves. I had a hard time putting this one down despite my initial thoughts on the game when I was younger. Bomb Squad. Here's another one I didn't think much of when I was younger, but I found it pretty enjoyable this time around. You sling cannonballs into the bomb bombs falling from the sky. If you let them destroy all four of your flowers, it's game over. If you hit a Lakitu, all the current bomb bombs will blow up, and if you really want to rack that score up, you will get bonus points for hitting multiple bombs with a single cannonball. This is a real fun one. Sword of Explode. Red and black bombs come from the top and bottom of the screen, and you need to quickly sort them into their respective areas. Take too long or drag a bomb bomb into the wrong area, and it's game over. This is a pretty basic one, and really hard to play on a not DS, but it's addictive all the same. I don't know if I'll regret ranking this one so high, but despite the simplicity, Sort and Explode is one of the few games that is forever engraved into my mind, and it seems to be a fan favorite for many others as well. Mushroom Roulette. It's a roulette wheel. You have five coins you can allocate across the table to make your bets on as to what the ball will land on. It's a more simplified take on an actual roulette, which is exactly what you want for a casual minigame in a Mario title. Sold stuff. Slot Shot. This is a Pachika machine of a slot machine in the center. You have a limited number of balls you can launch onto the board, and you're trying Trying to get the highest score possible, particularly by using the slot machine which is activated by getting a ball down to the center pipe. This one is really fun, although I think it'd be better if you could control the slots yourself so that way your score wasn't up to pure chance. Bingo Ball. Same idea as slot shots, except the main gimmick being a bingo board opposed to slots. I prefer this one to the slots because it feels like you have more agency over how you perform. Sure, the ball itself is unwieldy, so it's hard to gauge exactly how much power you should launch it with, but that's at least more reliable than crossing your fingers for what the slots will land on. Shuffle Shell. Use your paddle to slide your shells onto the target on the top screen. This is essentially just curling, and if you like curling, it's good. I mean, I like it at least. Although, I do think having the target spawn in one of the corners is basically cheating. There should probably be a separate leaderboard for each spawning position or something. Intense Concentration. Coins fall from the top screen and land in the brick blocks below. You have to remember which blocks coins went into and avoid the empty ones. One mistake and you're out. A simple premise, but I really like this one. Although, if you correctly guess every brick, the game just ends. Which I always thought was weird because that essentially means this game it does have a score limit, and on the intense version of this game, it's totally plausible to hit. Concentration. Same as the last one except more coins, which I do believe makes it better because not only is it harder to memorize everything, it's easier to get a decent score which makes the game more rewarding to play. Wanted. Time for the best of the best. The 5 out of 5 games. In Wanted, the top screen will show you a headshot, and you have to find it on the bottom screen. They should just call this game Find Luigi though because in higher rounds that's all they ask you to find. Also this game is way easier than I remember. I didn't even know the timer capped at 50 until I was getting footage. Funnily enough, the sound effect for additional time being added will still play even after it hits 50. <gasps> 
Once I got to stage 100, I eventually just gave up. Still a great game though. Puzzle Panel. This is a fully realized puzzle game. You have to make the board on the bottom screen look like the board on the top by flipping over tiles. Basically, you tap a tile and all of the surrounding tiles alongside the one you tapped will all flip over. Later stages require more than one flip, and once you get to three flips, I just can't. I'm too stupid. Still, props to the devs for adding such an in-depth game here. Puzzle Panic. Same game except it starts off harder. Also, I just realized, it's always the same levels in the same order. That being the case, wouldn't a level select opposed to a high score make way more sense? Even still, this is a great game as well. And the number one game in Super Mario 64 DS is... Picture Poker. This is the best game in Mario 64 DS, and everyone knows it. I mean, it's poker in a Mario game. That's awesome. Certain sets are worth more than others, and if both you and Luigi have the same set, it's ranked by suits. If you're dealt a good hand, you can bet more money, and you're always able to discard any number of cards when you're initially dealt a hand. It's such a fantastic game, and I've spent countless hours on it. Also, I don't remember Luigi being such a little cheating piece of sh**. Look at this! He's been dealing me trash this whole game! What are you dealing me this time? Oh great, a pair of mushrooms. Alright, let's just get rid of all this other crap. Holy cow, full house. This is good, this is good. I can't wait to see his four of a kind? And he only discarded one card! Which means he started with that! Pair of Mario's? Alright, let's see if we can get some more. Okay, that's not helping, but he only has one pair too, so it might not be so bad. Are you kidding me? You just happened to draw a full house! All right, starting of two pairs. My luck is looking up. That's it, we're going all in, betting it all. Let's get rid of this. All right, that doesn't really help me too much, but two pairs is still good. And he only has one pair, so we're looking real good. I hate this game. Best game though, 5 out of 5. Alright, now that we ranked them all, here's all the minigames. So between the four characters, who has the best selection? Well, firstly, I'm gonna start by removing any duplicate games. Basically, any game that has a second version that is just easier, harder, or whatever, we're not counting it. As far as the duplicate games are concerned, Luigi had the most at three of them. Okay, so now that we've done that, here's all the scores. Yoshi has the most five-star games, despite his category otherwise being pretty lackluster. And conversely, Wario doesn't have any five-stars, despite having mostly solid games. But let's plug those numbers in and get the averages. These numbers are way lower than I was expecting, especially for Luigi at 2.8. So I thought a better way to gauge who had the best category would be to just count how many games were rated 4 or 5 stars. Which leaves us with this. Yoshi has two games worth revisiting, Mario 2 as well, Luigi 3, and Wario 4, which does line up with Wario also having the highest score average. This isn't too much of a surprise though since Wario's category has both pachinko games, Concentration, and Bomb Op Squad, all of which being very solid games. There we are though, which games were your favorite? Make sure to let me know how horribly wrong this list is in the comments. And now I'm gonna kill myself. Bye! Thanks for watching, I'm still alive, teehee. I'd like to give a special thanks to my patrons such as Abby Knutson, Amanda Guth, Cashinator, David Pacheco, Drew Kellenberger, Jeffrey P. Long, John Hancock, Kinzel Tien, Michael Noose, Naomi Norbez, Pretoria Mars, and Robbie Batter. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, have a good one.